When I started making this video all about horses and the Master Cycle Zero, I had finished recording but not yet finished editing when Croton published this video explaining all the hidden horse stats and beat me to the punch. I highly recommend it. He did a great job. Please check it out. He covered a few things I didn't cover and I cover a few things he didn't cover and there's one point where we actually have conflicting information so hopefully both of our videos are worth watching. And without further ado, let's get this video started. The first thing about horses is the difference between gentle and wild temperament. When you tame a gentle horse, they are tamed right away and they immediately have a max bond. And if you spur them too many times, they don't really mind too much, they just go slow for a few seconds. When you tame a horse with wild temperament, it requires a whole bunch of soothes and until you have max bond, they will keep disobeying your commands and misbehaving. Even after you have max bond, if you spur too many times, they will buck you off. The bond between Link and a horse increases each time you get a soothe with that pink sparkling love cloud. When the horse starts misbehaving, this is what you must do in order to regain control of the horse. You can also increase your bond by feeding it. Horses love apples and I guess maybe other stuff like carrots too perhaps, but people mostly just feed it apples. You can get a guaranteed soothe by spurring a horse and waiting for it to slow down, then soothing it. You can also accelerate that process by commanding the horse to slow down from the spur. Spur, slow down, soothe. Spur, slow down, soothe. Just make sure you remember not to spur too many times. Each soothe done this way increases the bond by 3% and each apple increases the bond by 10%. So the fastest way to get max bond is by using apples, but I find the spur technique to be more fun. I normally do the spurring technique while bringing my horse to the stable, and typically I'm already at or near max bond by the time I get there. The second stat we're looking into is strength. And the first question about strength is what does it even mean? Is it the horse's ability to harm enemies or what? To test this, I took a horse with two strength and I attacked an enemy. I found that if your horse is running, your weapon does double damage, and it's the same if your horse has 5 strength. So the horse strength doesn't affect your ability to attack or harm enemies. I also use the horse to run over enemies. I found if you are galloping with a spur, the horse causes 30 damage regardless of strength. If you're just at a full speed canter and not a gallop, your horse doesn't harm enemies at all. There is an exception to this with the giant horse. Bear with me, we're coming back to that. The Master Cycle Zero does 5 damage, but only if you're up to full speed before hitting the enemy. So strength is not attack strength. The next guess was that strength relates to how much damage a horse can take while in battle before dying. To test this, I killed a bunch of horses, so animal lovers should look away now or just remember it's just a video game, and I saved and loaded the game every time so no horses were harmed, not even in an imaginary world of video game land. With my 30 attack strength spear, a 5 strength horse died in 10 hits, a 4 strength horse died in 8 hits, and a 2 strength horse died in 4 hits. Next, I wanted to know about speed. Obviously, the more speed, the faster the horse, but I wanted to know how much difference the spur makes and do a comparison with the Master Cycle Zero. For starters, I ran each horse around this track at a canter and at a gallop. It turns out, the gallop makes your horse about 50% faster, and the Master Cycle Zero is equivalent to a 4-speed horse. The speed race is clearly won by the 5-speed horse, but there's something really surprising. The giant horse is only 2-speed, but that's misleading because of its huge size. It canters faster than any other horse. It is surprisingly fast at about 60% of the speed of the full-speed galloping 5-speed horse.
to really emphasize this, I did a race between the four and five speed horses, the Master Cycle Zero, and the Giant Horse. I'm able to precisely time them by freezing frames in the video, so the timing accuracy is definitely accurate at a tenth of a second, with questionable accuracy at the hundredth of a second. As mentioned before, the five-speed horse with spurs is the clear speed winner. The Master Cycle Zero is basically equivalent to a four-speed horse, and the giant horse is 59% as fast as the full-speed galloping five-speed horse. Technically, the four-speed horse is ever so slightly faster than the Master Cycle Zero, but not enough to be a significant difference. The final stat before we move on to special characteristics, the stamina, doesn't really need any explanation. It's simply how many times you can spur the horse. There are two ways you can get extra stamina for your horse. One, you see these blue spurs over on the right come from the Ancient Bridle, which comes from the DLC. It's in a treasure chest that's on top of Satori Mountain. Two, you can give your horse an Endura Carrot. You get these three extra spurs, they're one-time use only. Any more than one carrot is uh, useless. Now, unfortunately, neither of these techniques works on the giant horse. Until I started making this video, the giant horse was my least favorite because I thought it was slow and useless. And the only thing I care about is getting the fastest horse in the game and then always using that horse. But in the making of this video, I learned a lot. First, I was surprised about the giant horse's surprisingly good speed. The two speed is misleading because of its huge size. Furthermore, there's an optical illusion going on. Because of riding high, things simply look slower than they are. This is an optical illusion I know from real life. When you ride in a tall truck, it feels slow, but then when you ride in a low car, it feels fast. But the most exciting characteristic of the giant horse is its ability to do battle. Not only is its 5 strength giving it the most ability to survive getting hit while in battle, it doesn't need to be at a gallop to deal damage to its enemies. In fact, you don't even have to be going full speed. You can even be at a slow walk and still do damage to enemies. When the giant horse is cantering at full speed, it does a massive 60 damage. When you slow down to a walk, it does 30 damage just like any other horse at a full gallop. You can get the giant horse immediately after the Great Plateau, even before you have any hearts or stamina or good weapons. This horse can single-handedly take out an entire camp of silver and gold enemies without taking so much as a scratch. For some reason, it doesn't work on stone pebblets, and I don't recommend taking him to a Lionel. Remember that your horse's health is restored any time you save and load the game or fetch your horse out of stable. If your horse does die, you can resurrect him by going to the Highland Stable slash the Cow Macog Shrine and go to the Horse God. The giant horse is excellent at hunting wildlife for rare and gourmet meat you can sell for a high price, and when you do battle with bokoblins on horseback, you can just run into them. He knocks them right off their saddles, which is a great military advantage to you. For one, bokoblins on horseback have greatly improved eyesight, and when they attack you on horseback, they also get a 2x damage multiplier just like you do. They can see you for miles away. If you don't have your giant horse, I might recommend stasising them off their horse, which slows them down, makes them less powerful, and reduces their range of sight. The last thing I have to talk about in this video is fuel for the Master Cycle Zero. Nearly all items replenish about 10% of your fuel, and thankfully, the more common and less valuable an item is, the more it tends to replenish. 
Very valuable items like dragon parts and lino parts provide almost no fuel at all, so in general, just use whatever you have the most of. Apples, Hylian shrooms, ancient screws, or wood are all great fuels for the master cycle. There are a couple of items with surprising characteristics. They provide non-linear fuel. For example, monster extract, star fragments, fairies, giant ancient cores, and ancient cores. If you put in one, they only replenish a tiny sliver of fuel, maybe about 5%. But use a second one, looks like about 10%. A third one looks like about 25%. And if you use a fourth one, your tank is full, so you can't go any higher than that. That's all I have for this video. Please give it a like. It's all the thanks I get for doing this. Hopefully you learned something, and I know I sure did. See you all later.